What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video. So I just saw Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness a few days ago and I wanted some days to kind of process it before I made my review. So as I was coming up with what I wanted to say for my review, I realized that a lot of what I wanted to say had to do with the other movies in this phase. So ultimately I was just like, you know what, we'll scratch the review. We're just gonna do a tier list of all the phase four projects so far, all the movies and all the shows we've seen. Now with that said, I am going to be releasing in probably about a week, my entire MCU movie and TV show ranking. So if you guys wanna check that out, please make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. People who subscribe to my channel, you also have to hit the notifications if you wanna get my content. I don't know why, ask YouTube. And of course, if you have any cool ideas for future tier lists, let me know in the comments below because if I use your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in that video. Now with that said guys, let's jump in. First off, we're starting with Black Widow. And right off the bat, Black Widow is okay. I think it is a very just okay film overall. It's okay if you like it, that's fine. But for me, I just find it okay. Like there's really nothing about it that is super um, interesting. Um, I watched it twice. The first time I thought, this was okay. And then the second time I watched it, I was like, all right, yeah, this is just very okay. I think the biggest problem for me about this film it has the action, it has the espionage, you know, it feels like a Black Widow film. The biggest con for me is that this Black Widow movie should have came out right after Civil War. I think knowing what happens to Natasha, the fact that everything that happens in this movie almost is kind of uneventful because there's no stakes. We already know what's going to happen to her. We know she's going to make it beyond this. You know, we know she gets to Infinity War and she dies in Endgame. We know that. So this movie just kind of feels like a chapter that they were going to make, but they decided to just hold it back. And then they made Infinity War and um, Endgame. And they're like, oh, you know what? Let's throw that back in. And because of that, the movie itself doesn't have that extra gravity it wants to think it has. Like the movie wants you to take it serious, but you can't because you know the stakes. You know what's going to happen. You know she's going to make it out. You know what I mean? And um, the best thing I guess about this movie is mostly just to introduce her sister as the new Black Widow eventually down the line. She'll probably eventually become the Black Widow um, of the new Avengers or whatever they do next. So the majority of this movie doesn't have that strong of a script in the first place. It feels like a story that didn't need to necessarily be told. And because of that, it really pulls this movie down for me. I would understand if you were to put this movie in booty. I don't say it about a lot of movies, all right? I'd understand if you would completely hate this movie. I would understand if you put this in bad. But for me, I think like a low okay. And like I said, the movie itself feels pointless. And that's okay if you like Black Widow. I love Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson, she's awesome. And she's hot, you know, she's, she's great. But the movie itself just didn't need to exist. And because of that reason, it brings it down for me. And of course, the ending. The ending really just like shot itself in the foot. I'm not a fan of the ending. And I don't mean just like what happens, the story. I just mean like overall, like this movie was trying to stay relatively grounded. Like overall, for the most part, it was relatively grounded for the majority of the movie. And then at the very end, there's a sky fortress. And it's just like, no. That Sky Fortress thing didn't need to be a thing. They, they, they did that just to throw a little extra Marvel um, explosions and action in the end. And that pulled it down for me even more. So I would actually probably want to put this in bad, but there are enough redeeming qualities in this movie that I'm going to put it at a low okay. So that's where it is in my opinion. Next one, WandaVision. I think WandaVision's good. It's actually one of my favorite shows so far from the MCU. It's probably actually like maybe up there like my second or third favorite but we'll we'll get to that you'll see what i mean it's a very interesting premise i think the first two episodes are kind of weaker than the um the ones that follow those but that's understandable because it is the show those are more of the introductory episodes and then when episode three hits that's when the show actually starts moving i actually had a buddy of mine who tried wandavision and he he watched the first two episodes and he was like nah i'm not getting into this and i was like I can see the argument there. I understand why someone would just like watch the first two episodes of WandaVision and go, this isn't for me and leave it. Because the first two episodes are very um, distant from the, the episodes after that. They're not bad episodes. I don't think they're, they're, they're bad. They just don't have the same tone as the episodes that follow them. So I do understand the argument if you were to put this show in okay or maybe even bad. 
but for me i think good is just a, a solid spot for it so i'm gonna leave it right there next eternals this is the one that people are probably going to really disagree with me i think uh, eternals is really good it has its cons yes but i think if you take a step back and you look at the director's vision it's much like Zack snyder's justice league like i actually really like that movie too um you sit back you look at what the director's vision is you can really accept this film as really good with that said I do understand if you're looking for a more traditional Marvel movie, you're going to be very disappointed by this. And in fact, you might be angered by this and say it's the worst one in the entire MCU. And that's fair. That's a fair criticism. But I'm telling you, if you take a step back and you accept the vision of the, uh, the director telling the story, you're going to like it a lot more. So that's all I'm going to say about that. We're leaving it there. Uh, maybe I'll go into further detail when I do my full MCU ranking. Like I said, I'm going to be doing it in about a week. That video is probably going to be like an hour long. <laughs> so it's going to be a fun one. So make sure to subscribe for that, like I said earlier. Next one, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is okay. I actually like it a little bit more than Black Widow. But the problem was I wanted to put this in amazing. Like when I was thinking about like, oh man, this is the next chapter. This is effectively Captain America 3.5 in a way, right? So I was really looking forward to seeing how this whole story would kind of uh, come together after um, you know Steve leaves. And now here are these other two guys who are kind of going for that shield. And then there's a third guy that gets introduced. And I just think the movie itself had a very Winter Soldier feel, which is good, but it missed the mark. And then it tried to like in the very end drive like uh, uh, an agenda or a message. And it's just like, just stop. Like, there was just too much. Anthony Mackie being new Captain America, I'm fine with. Um, I do hope, though, if they do do a season two of sorts, that Bucky gets a little bit more, um, I should say screen time, but a little more development. I guess he does get character development in this. But while this is called the Falcon in the Winter Soldier, this is the Falcon show. That's the thing. This is the Falcon show. He's going to be the next Captain America. So, of course, they're going to put him a little bit further in front of Bucky. But for me, while I like the Falcon, you know, Bucky is one of my favorite characters. He's been one of my favorite characters since the first Avenger. You know what I mean? And that's why I wanted to see more Bucky. I felt like Bucky kind of got held back in this. I feel like they're not really giving him the proper um, development that I'd like to see. So I'm hoping that if they do a season two, Bucky gets a little bit further in the front next. You know, and then yeah, I know they're doing a Captain America 4, and then, um, you know, that's going to be... Um, the Falcon story, him becoming Captain America and, you know, trying to figure out after he is now Captain America type of thing. If they do a season two or they just do like a show called like the Winter Soldier, you know, I hope that Bucky gets that development that we can really like um, see him becoming a potential Captain America. Because I do feel, and this just might be me, of course, but I do think that let's say something happens to um, Anthony Mackie. I know he just became Captain America, but if something happens to him in Captain America 4, Bucky is going to have to pick up the shield. At some point, Bucky will become Captain America. Uh, I don't know when. We could still be like five years away from this. But um, I want to see more happening with Bucky. You know, I, I like I like Anthony Mackie's Falcon. You know, he's chill. I like Sam. Sam Wilson. It's cool. But Bucky is the guy I tuned in to um, watch that show for. And I didn't get enough of him, in my opinion. I didn't like that he was sidelined. I mean... That, as well as the story itself, was just very, like, plain. Like, it was fine. Like, it could have been much more intriguing, but it was... They played it safe with it. So, with that said, let's move on to the next one. So, I'm going to save my Moon Knight thoughts, because this just came out. I'm going to save this for right after Spider-Man. All right. So, Marvel What If. I think this one is... People might be mad at me for this, because I know a lot of people like Marvel What If. I think it's just, like, it's, it's, it's okay. I put a little bit in front of Falcon and Winter Soldier. I thought it was fine. I don't think it was necessarily good. I understand if you were to think it was good, but I just think overall, like the story itself, why I appreciate what they were trying to do. I just care a little bit less of it because it doesn't really count in my opinion. I know people are really gonna hate me for saying that, but for me, I just, you know, I just don't really count it as a main story. You know, not yet. It's still very possible for these characters to eventually, you know, be brought into the true MCU. But for right now, it's more of just like a side story for me. So I just don't care as much. I don't, I don't feel as compelled to care as much. But, uh, you know, maybe soon I'll care more. But for right now, 
it's more of like a show that I'm going to watch once and I'm never going to watch again. And that's kind of a thing with all these MCU TV shows. And this is why I really kind of hope they eventually turn some of these shows, or if not all of them, into like two and a half to three hour movies. And I know that that might be a little tougher to do, but there are people out there you can hire. Marvel can hire to actually do this. So we'll do it like relatively cheap. And we can actually have movies out of a lot of these shows because I'll be honest, I'm not going to watch The Winter Soldier again or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm not going to watch that again. I'm not going to watch WandaVision again. I'm not going to watch Loki again. I'm not going to watch Hawkeye again. I'm not going to watch Moon Knight again. I'm not going to watch any of these shows again. But do you know what I will rewatch? I'll rewatch The Eternals. I'll rewatch Black Widow. I'll rewatch um, Shang-Chi and, of course, Spider Man and Doctor Strange. Like, I'll rewatch the movies because I like to do that. I like to put movies in my rewatch binges. I like that. The TV shows, I don't want to do that for. So if they could cut those down, I'd appreciate it. I'd understand if they don't, but just for like the rewatchability part of things, at least in my mind, I'd like to just have these cut down in the movies. You know, I got the extra meat and potatoes. Now just give me like the slim fast story. You know, that's what I want. So I kind of hope they eventually do that down the line. But um, who knows? Why not? Why not? Just do it. You got, you got all the money. Just do it, Disney. <laughs> all right. Um... Next, we have Loki. I actually really like Loki. I'll probably put a little bit behind Eternals. I like Turtles a little bit more. Um, Loki altogether was a surprise for me because when they were first announcing all these shows, I thought Loki sounded like the most stupid idea. And to be fair, it is kind of like a zangy or dumb premise. But I think what they managed to do with it, it really came together and was it was super solid by the end. So I'm happy with it. Uh, next one, Shang-Chi. Um, I think Shang Chi's okay. I'll probably put a little bit in front of What If. Um, not much I can talk about. I like the action in it. I think the kung fu's cool. I like the main character. Um, he's a little bland, but you know, taken from the fact that this is his first movie, you know, he'll get a little bit more development later on. But for right now, I just think uh, it's a high okay. I can't really say good. I'd understand if someone were to put it in good. I think overall, the story it serves, characters. It's just okay. Next one, Hawkeye. Um, I actually like Hawkeye a little bit more than Shang-Chi, but I still can't really say it's good. Definitely feels like another story that didn't need to be told. There's a lot of MCU stuff where like there's a story here and there, like I mentioned with Black Widow, where it feels like it's not really a development on anything. It feels like it's just there to introduce uh, more of the universe, but not to really continue any story being told. And that's what the Hawkeye feels like. Um, like a lot of these movies, even with Eternals, you could say Eternals, they added more extra exposition in, in the back of all this MCU. You know, they added something extra to that um, overall world. Then you have WandaVision and that kind of explained what happened after Endgame and what's happening with Wanda. At least we get some more character development on her. And then you get Hawkeye and the story goes like this and just gets stuck. And then the whole story gets told and then just keeps on going. Like there's no actual story development overall. Like I wasn't at the end of Endgame asking, I wonder what Hawkeye's doing, you know? I mean, I like Hawkeye, I do, you know? And here's the thing, I like the show, I do like it. Um, I like Kate Bishop. I think their chemistry together is really cool. I like the fact that Natasha's sister showed up. I like the fact that Kingpin showed up, even though he pretty much did nothing. But that's one of those things where like they introduced him to bring him back at some point in the future. I think it's just okay. It feels like a side story, but even though it's a side story, it was fun. It was it was entertaining at least, so that's that's good. Okay, next one, Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, if we're comparing all of these, Spider-Man No Way Home is definitely the best. It is it is in the amazing category. Are there some faults with this movie? Yes. Um, pretty much the whole setup, the whole idea of uh, Peter and Strange messing up the multiverse in the first place. Yeah, it's, it's messy and doesn't seem very uh, canonical with the characters we've seen in the past. I can kind of roll it off because, you know, Strange has been blipped away for a long time, right? He comes back and he's still thinking he's he, he got everything figured out. You know, um, of course, Peter's a kid, so he's just like, I want to do this because it's the right thing to do. But I'm not really thinking extra, like the extra things that go into that, what I want. So um, I think as far as that goes... It's understandable when you come from that perspective. But besides that, you know, you got awesome stories, you got awesome nostalgia, you got great callbacks. You know what I mean? Like it's just great action. Overall, it's an amazing film and it deserves to be an amazing, but I'd understand an argument for good, but I don't think you could put this one in bad. And I think if you put Spider-Man No Way Home in bad, you just don't like 
fun things. So that's the way it is. Next one, Moon Knight. Uh, Moon Knight was good. I actually liked this one. Oh, I don't know. I really liked Loki. I might put it a little bit in front of Loki right now. Um, maybe after a few weeks of Moon Knight being uh, less fresh in my mind, because right now that just ended like just like last week or something like that. So that's still fresh in my mind. And I really liked a lot of Moon Knight. I thought like the Moon Knight show altogether just felt much more mature than a lot of the other MCU things we've seen. And I really appreciated that. The only qualms, I guess you could say, I have with Moon Knight is the very end of the last uh, last episode. It just kind of got a little too MCU for me. The previous six episodes, it was trying to do something that didn't feel MCU. I mean, it had elements here and there, obviously, but it was trying to be different. And then like the last like 10 minutes of the last episode, it just goes like full MCU. And it's just like, ah, eh. you know, um, I appreciate the MCU. I know its formula and um, it can do that formula really well. But Moon Knight was trying something different. And in the end, it kind of felt like it pulled the rug out from under us and just kind of went straight into the MCU field. And I just wasn't a massive fan of that. So I'm going to put this in good. Um, I definitely recommend it for people. I don't think I did like a full out review for this one. I did reviews per episodes, but um, yeah, I definitely recommend this for people who haven't seen it. It's pretty hardcore. I think you'll like it. So before I do the final one on this list, which is the Doctor Strange, I have three other ones that are like, um, they're not out yet, but these are future premonitions. So I'm gonna put She-Hulk. I think She-Hulk's gonna be okay. It's probably gonna be right, right around the same thing as Hawkeye. Um, Miss Marvel, I actually think I'm going to be pleasantly surprised by. I'm gonna put that like right behind WandaVision. And then Thor Love and Thunder, I think is going to be really good, but not amazing. So I'm going to say that for now. Um, those, of course, are predictions, but maybe one day when these come out, I'll come back to this video and uh, we'll see if I'm right. But um, let's move on to the last one. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. I think it's good. Um, but I don't think it's as good as Loki, Eternals, Moon Knight. I respect it. I appreciate it. I like the fact that it feels very Sam Raimi. If you are a fan of Sam Raimi, you haven't seen this movie. I'm not going to go into too much spoilers for this specific episode because it only just came out. But I will tell you this. If you like Sam Raimi, you're going to love this movie. This movie is pure Sam Raimi all the way through. Yes, it does have its MCU elements, but this is a Sam Raimi film. There are some things that happen in this movie with some characters where it's just like, wow, this, it's cool to see these guys. And then like something happens, you're like, oh wow. Well, I guess that's that. Uh, hopefully that's not too much spoiler, but you know, if you're watching this, you probably already watched it. So yeah. Like I said, next week in my full MCU ranking video, I'll cover the spoilers of that movie. But for right now, I think it is good, um, but that could change. When I left the theater, I actually thought it was kind of okay. But um, after a few days of thinking about it, it moved up to good so maybe we'll move up to amazing by next time but i think it might just be there for me but what do you guys think about the mcu phase four how would you rank them let me know in the comments below please consider leaving a like subscribe and turn notifications for more videos like i mentioned at the beginning of this video if you guys have any cool ideas for future tier lists or rankings let me know in the comments below because if i use your suggestion i would give you a shout out in that video but thanks again for watching and i'll catch you next one peace